Hi guys, so it's me again. <laughs> I'm Stacey from Zoo to You, and today we are going to do our last animal from our African species. Before we go into that, we want to um, emphasize that we are launching our animal adoption packages. There are three packages, gold, silver, and bronze. Um, our birds are also going to be part of our packages. We had someone win one of our gold barn owl packages for naming her bow. Um, so Joani is also part of them packages where you can come in, meet him and potentially fly him if he says it's okay. <laughs> they say you don't work with children and animals and animals are just as indecisive as children sometimes. And Joani is just the same. If he doesn't want to fly, he isn't going to fly. So we've launched all three of them now. We don't have the information on our web page yet, but we are going to get it up hopefully by the end of next week. But if you have any questions, queries, or you want to adopt one of these fabulous animals, uh, just email the email address below at melissa at zootu.co.uk and she can forward across all the information you need, including what the packages include and also the cost for the year of the packages. So we're really looking forward to getting a lot of people meeting our animals once this crisis is over. So before we go into Jelani, we are going to remind you of what your homework is for this uh, for today. So we've been making fact files on the animals that we present to you. So you guys have been getting really creative and really colorful um, pictures drawn, and you've been writing loads of interesting facts that we are telling you, and you're also going off and researching it on your own. Like I said, your fact files do not have to be on the animals we present. You can do one that you want to do if you want. You don't have to do an African spotted eagle owl today. You could do a different bird or a different animal that you would find in Africa as long as it covers that continent. Okay. Now, Africa is a very large place. You see loads of animals there. Uh, you've got elephants, giraffes, uh, Owls, birds, lilac breasted rollers, there's thousands of animals over there that you could write your presentation on. Um, so we're just going to tell you some really cool and interesting facts about Jelani. So if you want to create one, it doesn't have to be too deep. You can get really creative like you did last week and a couple of weeks ago and make some 3D animals and then put little facts around them on post-it notes or little squares. It's entirely up to you. But once you've done them, post them on our Facebook page so we can see what you're creating. It's very interesting for us to make sure that you guys are learning what we want you to, to learn. So this beautiful owl here is Jelani, and Jelani is an African spotted eagle owl. And if you read at the bottom, it tells you his name in Swahili means mighty one, because he is pretty mighty when he stares at the camera. He gets a bit camera shy, don't you? So there. There you go. So this here is Jelani. Um, so these guys are really, really incredible species. Um, you would find them over a wide range of southern Africa. You'd find them in the Kalahari Desert and you would also find them in the Sub-Sahara Desert, the southern side of it where we looked at what we read about the other day, right? Yes. So the other day when you were with me, um, we presented the tortoises, and you'd find them in the sub-Sahara desert as well, on the southern side of it, and Jelani would be found in the same area. However, he doesn't live on the floor like the tortoises do, he lives in the sky. He is a bird. If you joined in on our classification week, you would learn all the features of what birds were. Um, so the most prominent one is that Jelani is covered in all these beautiful feathers, and that is pretty much one of the main characteristics of a bird. But all birds have wings as well, but not all of them fly. So there's lots of different characteristics that make Jelani a bird. And the last main one is that he lays eggs. All birds lay eggs. So this eagle owl here is actually the smallest species of eagle owl that you would find in the world. Um, his wingspan is around three and a half to four and a half foot. So that's when his wings are spread out nice and wide when he is flying. The largest eagle owl in the world is potentially the Eurasian eagle owl because it can get a wingspan of at least six foot. If I was stood up, I would tell you that that is bigger than me. I am five, five foot three. So 
Think about how tall you are. If you're a small child, probably double it. And that is probably the wingspan of either Jelani or a Eurasian eagle owl, depending on how tall you are. So these birds have huge wingspans and they fly silently. Now, this is really, really important for owls. So these guys are known as silent hunters because if they beat their wings and their wings are really loud, then the food that they eat would hear them come in. So Jelani's main source of food is small mammals, so small mice, uh, elephant shrews, golden moles, lots of small little rodents that live on the ground, and Jelani can hear them, okay? So he would hear their heartbeat while he's sat in their tree, and he would be watching them with his really incredible eyesight as well. So he has binocular vision. So if you've ever looked through binoculars before, it tells you that when you look at something that's really far away, it brings it closer. But if you look at something close up, then it's kind of blurry. So Jelani doesn't see me. He just sees a bit of a blur at the moment. But from really far away, he can actually see incredibly well. Now, because close up is blurring and, you know, he has his food in his talons, he has little kind of whiskers around his beak that allow him to feel around for close-up things so that he can still figure out where things are. He is a very, very incredible little animal. So these guys, they you would find them in rocky areas. Uh, there needs to be quite a few trees around because he does like to sit in his tree quite a lot. Um, you would also find them in scrubland. The, there has to be grassy areas because most rodents would hide in the grassy areas. So it needs to be an area where Jelani can definitely find a food source. So that would be his ecological niche, the place where it provides him with food, water and a home to live in. So it's really important. OK, what? What do you see? What? So because he's at the centre today and it's a little bit echoing, um, my voice is echoing a little bit around. So he's looking around trying to figure out what's going on. So he keeps turning his head back into trying to focus on the noise because it's bouncing off the walls. He can't quite determine where it is. And that's why you keep seeing him look around so much. He looks very grumpy. But he's not, I promise you. He's adorable. He is one of our ambassador species here at the centre. So he was one of the first animals we got when the centre started up. And it just means that we use him to go out and do educational visits, such as schools. Um, Jelani here doesn't get shy in front of a crowd. Uh, he flies in front of classes. He's flown in front of a hall of students before. Um, so he doesn't mind being around people. So we call him an, an ambassador animal. OK, an ambassador species, meaning that he is used to educate the public on the importance of them. Now, as Jelani's turn is his head back into, you think it goes all the way around. Unfortunately, it does not. If his head rotated all the way around, it would pop off and he would be headless. But it does rotate 270 degrees. So that's like you turning your head from one shoulder blade all the way to your other shoulder blade. Now, the reason Jelani does this is because his eyes are fixed into his skull, whereas me and you, we can move our eyes left to right without actually moving our heads. Um, so Jelani has this because he needs to see his predators and his prey. So having his eyes fixed in his skull and rotating his head extra just makes it easier to figure out what, what things are, where they are around him and whether he can eat them or whether he should be afraid of them. So... Jelani has 14 bones in his neck, 14 vertebrae bones that allow him to have that extra rotation. You guys only have seven vertebrae bones in your neck, which allows you to rotate from here to here. Um, giraffes as well only have seven vertebrae bone in their neck. So you have the same amount of bones as a giraffe, even though their neck is so much longer, which I thought was a bit crazy, but it's true. So Jelani here is a carnivore and his main source of food in the Africa uh, mainland is pygmy mice, African pygmy mice. Now, he is really, really important to the environment that he lives in because pygmy mice, they have babies every 30 days and they have six babies at a time. That is a lot of babies. And once they've had them six babies, six weeks later, then babies can have babies again. So if you think that's a lot of mice. Jelani here has to eat, so he will hunt mice. They are really nutritious for him, and there is a lot of them around, so he helps keep the pest species to a minimum. Um, pest species such as mice, they carry diseases that can be um, 
eaten by our meerkats and stuff. And some of our animals can get ill from them. They can't fight off certain diseases. And so can people. So people actually use African spotted eagle owls in Africa to hunt their food. OK, so they hunt for the mice to get rid of the pests and diseases. So he is very, very important to the environment he lives in. He is known as what we call a secondary predator. So in the food train, tra uh, chain, uh, mice would be primary and then Jelani here would be secondary. But then there's a third tier, something that would eat Jelani. And this is the milky eagle owl. It has a, a wingspan of about a foot more than what Jelani does. So it's much bigger. And it tends to stand about this high on your glove. Um, so milky eagle owl would hunt Jelani because essentially it flies above Jelani. So anything that flies above Jelani has to be careful about. Now, if we look at Jelani's gorgeous feathers here, he looks a bit like a tree. Don't you? You're a tree. So this is his main camouflage. So if he gets afraid and he hears or sees a milky owl, what he's going to do is he's going to stand up nice and tall. He's got little ear tufts on his head just here that we call plumicorns and he would stick them up. Now, it's not scientifically proven that this works, but he would stick them up and close his eyes because his eyes are bright yellow and he would listen for that predator and he would listen to see whether it goes away. Hopefully it does fly away. But if not, unfortunately, Jelani might potentially get eaten by that milky eagle owl. So these plumicorns are supposed to make it harder to see the owl. It makes the outline a weird shape so that it camouflages better against its tree. Now, females tend to be about a third bigger than Jelani. So a female would come up to about here. Okay? And most people just think females are naturally bigger than males. There is a reason. And it is because when the female is incubating her eggs for a month, she can conserve her energy because she is bigger. She can eat more food and conserve that energy longer so that she can incubate her eggs, therefore not dying of starvation or the cold when she's incubating them. Now, these owls are monogamous, which means that they are together for life. Once they meet each other, they're essentially married. Um, it's the best way to explain it. So they only have babies with each other. So after mating, the female and the male would create a nest and they would do this together. Now, most birds create a nest in a tree. These guys create one on the ground. So they would choose an area that's rocky and hidden out of the way, or they would go into a grassy area and hide amongst all the grass or inside a bush. And they create that nest and the female will lay two or three eggs. And she has to sit on these eggs for a month to keep them warm. So Jelani here has a very important job. He has to bring the female food. I wish males brought me food every day. <laughs> so they bring the females food um, and Jelani is in charge of feeding her and keeping her energy levels up while she incubates them. Once them eggs have hatched, then they both go out and find food for their children after about five weeks. So for the first five weeks, the male goes out and gets it all. Um, and then the feet after five weeks, once they have been kept on heat and nice and warm and their feathers have started to grow through to insulate them, um, the female will go out and find food as well. After all of that, um, they teach them how to fly. They don't want them jumping off a really big tree to begin with because that can be pretty scary. And most owls forget to you know, spread their wings at the first time. Um, so they do it off small rocks and stuff first and teach them how to jump and spread their wings. And then once they've got the hang of that, then they will start to fly on their own. So it can take at least six months from hatching before they leave their parents. And this is called parent rearing. After that, they will go off, they will find their own mate, and they will start all over again. These guys can start breeding from at least four years of age. Uh, in the wild, they can only live till they're at least 10 years old, but in captivity, their lifespan doubles because there is less danger, less threat, and a constant supply of food source for them, which is very, very important. Now, the IUCN Red List has listed these guys as least concern in 2016. This doesn't mean that the species is not declining. It means that there is such a wide range that they live in. They literally live in about half of Africa. And because they're so widespread, they can't get an accurate number. So, they're so they figured it out so that population numbers in one certain area kind of mimic everywhere else. So they are being watched. Uh, they are 
that is like quite a lot of threats for them. Um, being predated is one of them. Uh, these guys unfortunately get hit by cars quite a lot now that Africa's starting to urban, uh, urbanization. Um, these guys get hit by cars, they get trapped in fences. These guys also hunt on the floor. So Jelani here has some very, very nice long legs underneath here. That means he can run pretty quick on the floor so he can get caught in fences that way. And unfortunately, the pet trade is a big issue as well. These guys are beautiful. Um, they are listed under Appendix 2 of CITES, which is a international organization treaty that protects animals. You've got things like tigers, bears, lions, and stuff like that under Appendix 1. Appendix 2 means that these guys cannot be, um, like their talent and stuff cannot be taken for medicinal purposes, uh, that they shouldn't be hunted for food and stuff like that. So they are protected. Um, but unfortunately, they are still declining because of habitat loss and global warming. So there's lots of things that factor into these guys living and thriving on their own. They are incredible. Now, what we're just going to quickly look at is Jelani's feathers. So a bird's feathers are really, really important. They help insulate them as they keep them warm. So their breast feathers and... <laughs> they convert feathers along the top of their wings are really important for insulation and then they have secondary and primary feathers on their wings that allow them to fly. Now these guys have serrated feathers that are designed the same way your zips are. So your zips slot perfectly into, um, into each other so that they go up and down. This design was actually from an owl's feathers. So they have very small filaments on the end of their feathers that slot together perfectly so air cannot pass between them. And this is how owls fly silently. So this is how Jelani is able to hunt and soar in the, fly, uh, in the air without that mouse hearing beneath him. Whereas if you listen to a pigeon or a crow fly, they're very, very noisy. So these guys are honestly an incredible hunter flying in the sky trying to basically scare people, but they're not that scary, I promise. They're pretty incredible animals and they're very wonderful. So that is pretty much everything I've got to tell you about Jelani today. So we are going to look at some of the incredible homework you guys have been sending in. So um, we have the metamorphosis cycle of some of the sun beetles that Liam taught you about yesterday, which is incredible, very colourful and very informative. We've got a tortoise living in the Sahara Desert from Tuesday's lesson. So well done, guys. The Spain family, these are incredible and very, very colourful. We are going to do a quick recap on what you have learned today. So today you have met um, Lani, our African spotted eagle owl. So the habitats that he live in are the sub-Sahara African area, um, also southern Africa. Uh, you've got rocky, rocky desert areas, outcrops, woodland and scrubland. So lots of grass where you can find lots of nice food. Don't forget that your homework today is to create a fact file about Jelani or one of the other animals that you have met. And please show us your homework, guys. It is absolutely incredible. You're so creative. Um, we understand that being in lockdown is rather tough, so we want to give you fun and exciting things to do um, that tie in with all your other subjects as well, like English. Um, we want to inform you that hopefully um, we will still be opening very, very soon, depending on the government uh, guidelines. Um, once we are open, we want to offer our animal experiences to everyone. So we do meerkat experiences, we do reptile experiences, and we do skunk experiences. So instead of just learning about our animals on these videos, you can come and interact with them. The majority of our animals here at the center are ambassador animals, which means we take them out, we use them for education. We want to give you the idea that you can interact with animals without being afraid of them. And they're not all as big and scary as you think, but you still need to keep your distance to wild ones because they have a different temperament than what ours have. Ours have been around people for life. They were bred in captivity, so they know how to act around people. Um, we also are getting ready to launch our conservation for this year. We really want to help kestrels. So next week we are doing British Natives Week. Uh, you will be meeting the barn owl again getting very big and um, you'll be meeting one of our kestrels and we'll be giving you all the information that you need 
to learn about these animals and ways to help them in the wild. Animals play a really, really important role for us to survive. So we want you guys to understand that as well. Um, we also have our crowdfunder page still going. Um, if you donate, there are huge rewards for you to um, get. Um, you'd be helping us make sure that these animals don't realise what's going on and that they're not confused. Um, our meerkats are getting a little bit lonely, so we are smuggling them on a daily basis. <laughs> um, but they can't wait for the meerkats to start back up. Um, we're still interacting with them all so that they will be able to come straight out on the road with us to meet you guys, to teach you guys. Uh, we also do therapy visits. Um, kids benefit and so do adults from interacting with gentle species and that's what we have here. Um, it can bring out a side of your child that you have never met before because animals make people calm. Honestly, I have the most relaxing job in the world. <laughs> so, yeah, please donate. Please help us out where you can. Um, all our animals can't wait to meet you again. We're going to do a big celebration hopefully soon to say that we're still here. Um, and hopefully we will see you very, very soon. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.